All right, YouTube, I'm live again. Um, after a couple of false takes, man, that etude's kind of tough. So this is uh, Dr. Russell Heights uh, composed etude three for this year's um, All-State Jazz, TMEA, Texas All-State Jazz uh, saxophone etudes. So this is the third etude, it's a lot of fun. It's based on uh, Out of Nowhere. By the way, he's from Texas State University out in Hill Country, and I take my band there. It's a great festival every year. It's Hill Country Jazz Festival. Uh, so, anyway, if you if you caught the other two false takes, you know, ah, it happens. There's just a couple little finger slips. I want to be able to do this one right. So this is Etude 3. And the question is, uh, what math piece are you using for the tenor sax? This is uh, Charles Bay, uh, 8EJ is the model, and uh, it's, uh, it's also a Charles Bay ligature. And then I use um, classical cut blue box Van Doren reeds. The jazz reads sound bad on this uh, mouthpiece. So I've been playing on that since 2000. It's a great, terrific mouthpiece. I think it's like 250 bucks, um, most I ever spent on a mouthpiece. So anyway, here's the etude. <laughs> So, super challenging etude. Uh, just a lot of little, like little tricky spots to have to iron out. Um, oh, so much fun internalizing and like trying to figure those little intricacies out as a saxophonist. Can really appreciate what this etude is doing for me. All right, so like I said, it's based on the tune out of nowhere. The chord changes are on your music. Uh, so, just starting uh, from that, you need to learn the melody to Out of Nowhere. So let me play that and I'll interpret, I'll improvise a little bit, but I'm just going to show the melody as best I can. <laughs> solo <laughs> Some of the uh, some of the things about improvising over out of nowhere, especially since this is the samba etude, it's originally a swing, so it's it's hard not to swing the samba. So one thing that I did to help me with that, and still kind of working on it, is uh, putting on, you know, uh, a samba backing track. We're playing with some friends with the Latin and just trying to play 
this tune as a samba, uh, or Latin fill, you know, straight eighths. So that was the first challenge to not go. You know, don't want to swing it. So it'll naturally have some swing elements to it based on how you're articulating, but you're going to want to be really careful about that. take than the first two I did but I was just thinking really hard about playing it very uh, non-swung and thinking about where I could articulate or let notes naturally pop out and the good part of this etude is that um, the composer has you know put some nice accents in and made it you know less of a headache and thinking of ah, where, should, where should I articulate there's gonna be some stuff that you're gonna want to do on your own added in with what uh, he suggests. So it is, it's pretty cool. Okay, so this one is challenging for obvious reasons uh, other than the, like some of the technique stuff. It's challenging uh, to just really sound like you're playing with a rhythm section while you're doing it. So you can kind of feel that underlining um, you know, samba thing. And this is in common with every year for these all-state jazz etudes. You know, but from the get-go, do do da ba di da de di da da everything a lot of it is on the upbeat. Ba 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 do do ba di ba do da di ba di ba do do di di do da do da do da do Okay, so you know, you should be able to count the etude, not just sing it, but be able to count it with the numbers, you know. Do da 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 de, da de, de, da da. <laughs> it's hard, you know, and also it's it's supposed to feel like it's in cut time, correct? Because if you look at the tempo at the top, you have a half note equals 100, so it's really at 200. Um, so it's a fast little etude. So that's the the next step, man. Slow this thing down. You got some time to iron it out. So boom boom ba da one and two and and. And da di da, you know, two, three, ba zi ba ga da di ba di ba do do di do di do da da one and two and three and four and one and two and 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 ba ga di da di da and da di da, you know, and just being able to nail something down like that and be really proud of it. See if you can play that along with me. And you, know, when we're done with the live stuff, you can go back and. Pause and stuff, you know. You know, just being able to get that far and feel that good about it. And then you can speed it up a little bit. So there's the first spot where you can bring your dynamics up a little bit. Because you don't want to be like... It's like super in your face, overly aggressive, not pleasurable to listen to. So think about getting to that spot. You're bringing your accents out, it's going to make it sound louder anyway, in you know, fuller tone. Yeah. 
So these spots are naturally growing. So you don't really have to push your air as much, you know. They'll, it'll naturally have that. And the more fun and the more billions of times you play this thing, yeah, I said billions, <laughs> you're going to internalize it and you're gonna like, you're gonna be kind of aware of like, ah, you know, I'm having more fun with it. And those dynamics will come out pretty naturally in that case. <laughs> so cool because it's so melodic and at that point in the etude it's kind of an unpredictable thing you know here we go ah gosh So there's no B flat there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost sounds like, uh, and that's a cool, cool thing to play when you're soloing over the tune. You know. The Crimea River thing is such a good tool in those spots. Okay, so anyways, um... You can almost lay that back a little bit, you know. those notes I hate the word short they're like lifted you know they still have to have a little bit of something and then you can not sucker punch them but you know kind of like a man it's like a you know tower of power thing so very syncopated very well written etude it's got a lot of tricky spots in it so you really want to take things slower and um, you know if you get uh, frustrated working on this and go from the <laughs> do it in reverse do the last line get that one down, then do the next line, and just learn, you know, think of it in lines. But that part, that's a spot for some vibrato, and I like the delayed kind, you know. You can see me kind of getting into it. Okay, so I also use my horn as a percussive instrument, not because it's leaking or keys are all messed up, but just, you know. Thank <laughs> you. 
fun. Just have some more fun with it. Use it as a, uh, a lesson in improvising too. And there's a lot of good stuff to steal from this one. So, uh, you know, working backwards, that last spot. to sound really good and pop out appropriately you know nothing like too much in your face you know you know you don't want that but you want so if you're having trouble with some of the rhythms just look at it a couple of measures at a time for example at the end one and z down you know just just stay on task figure out how you want to end it and then go backwards you know what's that beat on you know and one and one and two and three and four and da 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 dee da ba dee da ba do da do da one and just being able to kind of do that the whole etude what is a you know what's really a pickup so you know looking backwards from there you know those are all pickups into the next thing so do body da 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 di da 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 di da di da 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 di da di da 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 di da da di so. Four and one, two, and three. Ba do da do da 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 ba dee da ba do da do da da. You know, and I like this kind of practicing, and you know, you're just gonna get better at this over time. But keep breaking this thing down, and you'll have so much more fun with it. So back to the top, just isolate a couple of things. How much vibrato do you want there? <laughs> Nothing cheesy at the beginning. Just be confident. Have a little flavor. That's what you want. Da da ba di da di da uh uh. And just do that over and over till it feels good. And then you can have. Ba di di da di. That's just a variation of. Probably all heard that before. So we're back in just improvising kind of lines like. So it's getting into that. If you understand some of the theory behind it, people can hear that when you, when you play these, I think. Because you're, you know, you're demonstrating the tones that are, you're, you're bringing out the tones that are really important, you know. Anyway, let's see. So I'm almost tonguing every note, but I'm not tonguing every single note, but 
And then, you know, do you want to bring those notes out? Well, I mean, the excitement happens pretty late, pretty much later, so maybe not bring it out. Don't go, you know. It's kind of silly. So, it's wonderful how many people can interpret things different ways. So, um, just have my kind of like particular taste in all this. All right. Yeah, it's not a Peter Ponzel, it's a Charles Bay. Charles Bay. <laughs> You gotta be careful early on not to get your muscle memory learning stuff wrong. And it's just one little small note. Because at the state level, that's a big deal. It's like, ah, they were so careless. The student was so careless that they didn't make sure they learned all the notes, you know? Because who cares if you hear a recording that goes this fast, you know, and it's sloppy, like. <laughs> <laughs> There's sloppiness going to happen. There is a moment of going too fast. And even though I might be, like on this one, I definitely uh, recorded my alto version of this at 200. It was with a, one of those play-along tracks. Just to get me, it wasn't to like stay in time, it was to get comfortable playing this in a samba, you know, format. But also, if you play it too fast, then some of the cool parts of the etude don't happen. You know, like, if you play this too fast. It's just so much more exciting. Do body dot. Think about how you would sing it. You wouldn't want to go. Do do da ba do ba do ba 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 do ba ba do 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 so this is just a it's such a good a good one to make sure every day that you're learning it slowly and cleanly you know and that you're able to discern every note So I brought it there. I usually do raise my horn up as I'm crescendoing. And it brings the, the sound in a different direction. Cool. Okay, here we got a good question about uh, can you add your own style to the etude, like a la a bend, you know, or things like that. This one is just so busy, you know. So if you if you if you tried it too much, it could distract, you know. I'm just being ridiculous, but see adding turns in. It can make it sound cool in a couple of spots, but if you overdo it, the etude it already has a lot of a lot to it. So it's just about making it feel good. And by the time your uh, adjudicators are like looking at each other, man, this, this kid's it. It's because of how it felt, not because you put, you know, an inflection or a turn. So there are, there are some spots that have some merit to do that. Let me see if I can find one. No. Mm -hmm. 
So far, no. But if you could find one, that'd be cool. This one's a little different than the other two because there's um, it's so percussive and light. And anytime you add, you know. Anytime you add a little something to it, it's like, whoa. You know, because it just kind of moves itself with that kind of forward motion. Um, so yes, yes you can, as long as you um, address all of that stuff after you've thoroughly learned the etude. And then, you know, there are a couple of subtle moments that you can do it. But if your judges think that you're just, they don't, you don't want them to think you're doing it to be cute. And you don't want them to, th to think that you are trying to get extra points just because you're, some judges are different. Maybe they just like it. But me, I'm just thinking like, oh, man, these etudes, you know, they're, they're written etudes. And yes, there's interpretation. This is jazz. So jazz police isn't, shouldn't come get you just because you try a couple of things. <laughs> There's not really a spot in this etude that merits too much of any inflections, but, um, once you get it down thoroughly, if you find a spot, then you can. Uh, cool, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely doing subtone. So, you know. So, I'm gonna try, I'll try to play the etude without any subtone. It's gonna be kind of challenging, but let's see. As I get lower, I'm wanting to use it more. Because there's subtone verses. <laughs> so some of the range kind of dictates whether I'm using subtone or not. As I get lower. Yeah, playing playing subtone in the lower range kind of makes sense. And that's what I mean by not not decorating the etude too much, because you can, you know. You can show that you listen to a lot of jazz based on your sound, and if there's fuzziness in it, uh, maybe you're trying to sound like somebody, uh, that's a good thing, that's not a bad thing. Um, so, yeah, um, you're gonna wanna subtone some of the etude, so it doesn't sound so, Heavy, I guess. See, like there's a lot of subtone there. Instead of. <laughs> I'm overdoing it, but the concept is is that it's going to sound a little more fluid and natural if subtone is involved. <laughs> to have some fun with it um if your band directors are listening to you and they're like ah kids messing around you're just getting more and more creative uh, don't argue with them but um i'm a band director now but i was a uh, uh you know not for a long time and uh it definitely helped craft or craft me into you know being a better improviser just being able to take stuff and mess with it so there's nothing wrong with having fun with the etude and, and even with your sound and being silly, but uh, you're gonna want to you're gonna want to stick to a pretty good regimen here, because the audition happens pretty quick after school starts back, and then you record and then you wait. So there's not a lot of time when school starts to mess around. So. <laughs> Yeah, break down the etude. 
I, I mean, I think besides just learning the notes and stuff and learning the rhythms, it's just about making it feel good and practicing it correctly. In other words, you're taking it little by little and then putting it all together. Uh, real quick before I go, um, some other practice techniques that are pretty fun and one that you may may or may not have done is start something too fast maybe let's say you're you're having a little trouble at 160 right now like quarter note equals 160 so put on the metronome at 160 whatever that is you know just do that much and then move the metronome down to 150 move it down 10 clicks or 5 clicks depending on how much time you have and then play it again okay and then keep going till you get to a ridiculously slow tempo maybe not 40 but go down to like you know 80 or something something pretty slow slower than that I think and rather than go slow to fast like going back to the tempo you started put the metronome immediately on the faster tempo I didn't learn this till I was a sophomore in college yeah maybe a freshman in college actually but fast to slow practice is good it has a lot of merit and I use that one to really clean things up what happens is you're developing your muscle memory as it goes down so that way as soon as you get back to the tempo you you couldn't do it before suddenly you can and things get a lot cleaner um, or if it's not perfect when you go back it will be sooner or later and uh, you'll be more tight at slower tempos like let's say you can't do it at 160 accurately 100 percent but you can at 150 then this practice method has a lot of merit it's like you're being able to increase the tempo by doing the fast to slow thing and slow to fast of course has its huge merit um, and I just really like I like thinking of things a little differently or outside the box and one of them is fast to slow practice um, it was introduced to me by one of my teachers at North Texas before I had Jim Riggs professor emeritus there I had some uh, some really good uh, teachers and one of them was Dave Shell. He's the one, David Shell. And he's one of the ones that showed me that. He said, fast to slow practice. He also helped me a lot with learning how to transcribe really well. Just being able to play something very tight and feel good about it. And then uh, if you want to put yourself on a routine, you know, don't take this in huge bites every day. Just take little small chunks and it'll be really good. All right, thanks for staying with me. This is fun.